This is Actual Cost, the show where I take ultra cheap recipes on YouTube and try to find out how much it would actually cost you to both make it time-wise and financially, like money-wise. Let me tell you, it's not as cheap as it seems. So today, we're tacking on, once again, the king of cheap recipes, uh, Joshua Wiseman, for doing his $2 burrito. I'm gonna spoil it real quick. It's not actually $2 per serving, especially because we don't know exactly how many servings it's going to make. So we're gonna find out at the end of the video. You and I are both gonna learn how much it costs, but I know for sure it's more than $2. So with that said, Let's get into it. We're making tortillas. So to make the tortillas, it's relatively simple, I think. You need 300 grams of flour, two grams of baking powder, four grams of salt, like 60 milliliters of oil of your choosing. So I have all those ingredients in this bowl right now. I'm just gonna give them a quick whisk and then we're gonna add the oil to it. And so the goal is to make like a shaggy dough. So we're adding the oil to this mixture. We've got 180 milliliters of warm water in this measuring cup. That in tandem with the oil, which I think I was supposed to mix them together and then add it separately. But yeah, that together should give you like a shaggy. I'm just gonna put my phalanges in here, man. <laughs> what does that sound like to you? Sounds like some good mac and cheese to me. All right, I might turn this out onto the work surface to see if I can get like a, like a shaggier dough going. It's stuck to my fingers right now. And I don't own a stand mixer, but it's fine. We're doing it live. I've never needed dough for like tortillas ever. So I'm kind of winging it here, but like so far it's going well, as you can see, we're having a great time. I may be an amateur in the kitchen, but I'm no amateur when it comes to slapping balls. Now we have like this glossy smooth dough ball, which is looking kind of nice. So we're gonna wrap this up and then let it rest for like 30 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna make some rice, which should be like fairly hands off as well. There you go, got your little dough ball. That's what you look like. So while the dough is resting, I got the rice cooker out. I just washed my rice. We're gonna let that go in the background. While it's doing its thing, we're gonna start working on the chicken, which we're using two pounds of chicken thighs for. We're gonna marinate that. Okay, so I've since ground five grams of black pepper with the assistance of my executive producer. And I also have this raw chicken in the bowl. So we're gonna add the spices to the chicken and then we're gonna get the chicken in some adobo sauce and then sear it on the stove and then bake it in the oven. Can I interest you in some raw chicken? Can you, can you see that? All right, I, I take it you can see that. By the way, I have pre-whisked these seasonings so it's like a nice mixture of all the seasonings together. Paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, black pepper, as you know. We got cumin, which is weird because I don't even know him. It's a lot of spices. So now we just take these chipotle peppers in adobo and then we're gonna add the adobo sauce to the bread, uh, thighs. Raw chicken freaks me out, by the way, which is why I'm being skittish. I don't love the whole like, everything's poison that it comes into contact with. <laughs> I might vomit. All right, so we got the chicken seasoned. My hands are now clean. We're gonna throw it in the pan that has some hot oil in there. Hopefully get like a nice two to three minute sear on both sides. And then we're gonna transfer it over to a sheet pan. Get it in the oven. Stab your meat gently. All right, I don't know if you can see this, but this pan is literally smoking hot. He said he had the pan like ripping hot. I had my pan ripping hot and it just burnt the seasonings. So like, what the hell, man? Did I mess this up really bad? I'm gonna try to start a new pan, but this smoke's like burning my nostrils now. Uh, I'm just gonna throw water on this hot oil real quick. So we have a different pan going now and we're gonna hopefully not burn this one. Give it two to three minutes on each side. So we just finished searing the chicken thighs. Uh, almost burned the house down. As you can see, there's a ton of smoke around still. We're gonna put them in the oven now to finish them off. Hopefully not burn them any further. So the chicken's currently in the oven. While we're waiting for that, we're gonna cut up the jalapenos and the onion for the beans. We're gonna get that started. We're gonna put these veggies in that little pan over there. Hopefully not drop them everywhere. All right, so we're gonna add the beans. We have the vegetables on the stove right now. Just gotta open up this can of beans. All right, progress report. I put the chicken back in the oven because it's uh, taking a bit of time to make everything else. Like the assembly doesn't happen all at once. The beans are still going in the background. We haven't even added the bacon to that. I'm currently chopping the cilantro for the rice. I'm about to add the butter and then the lime and hopefully season the rice with a little bit of salt. So the rice will be done. Then we just gotta finish the beans. And yeah, the chicken's in the oven, but it's like with the residual heat, I'm not actively cooking it just cause I don't want it to be like ice cold by the time I finally assemble everything. And we have to make the tortillas. 
uh, as, you know, comparatively, compared to the nachos, I think this is a little bit more difficult just because there's a lot more steps. And I'm trying to multitask, right? I'm like doing my best. I'm being conscious of the time that I'm using. But so far, I'm like two hours into this recipe and it's just not going that smoothly. It's not, it's not happening all at once. All right, got the rice out of the rice cooker. We're gonna add this naba butter. Uh, should I cut it into chunks? I'll do chunks. Make it easier to melt. A little bit of a competitive advantage for this butter. All right, butter's incorporated. I'm now gonna add some cilantro to the equation and then a little bit of lime. This is like 16, 15 grams of cilantro, the way that he specifically laid out. So the cilantro lime rice is just about done. So last step in completing the beans, we have the rice done. We just need to cut up the bacon and then get it on the frying pan. And then we're gonna use that bacon fat to cook the fajita veggies. And then we're gonna complete the beans with the bacon. And it's, it's a process. There's a lot of steps to this one. I think this one's a little bit more difficult than the nachos. So I'm just cutting these right now into half inch lardons. What's a lardon? Like actually, can you write me in the comments? What is a lardon? Because I'll tell you what, brother. Joshua Wiseman, he looks like a lardon. Hey, no hate, no, no tea, no shade. That was a joke, that was a joke, man. I don't even know what that means. So I'm just gonna like put all of this bacon into my hand <laughs> and then we're gonna toss it in the pan. And you can hear it sizzling right now. I'm gonna try to spread the lardons out. It's not as thick as the bacon that he had. I couldn't find any that thick and the ones that were like on the thicker side were like substantially more expensive. Maybe he went to a butcher to get that. Well, he also lives in Texas. I don't know if they have like better cuts of bacon, schmeat but I didn't personally have that option. He had some technique where he like wrapped the knife around the center core and I got it all at once. So I took the core out of the bell pepper that I need for the fajita veggies. Thankfully, did not cut my fingy wingies in the process. And uh, <laughs> now I'm gonna cut the jalapenos as well. Hopefully you get the onion in there. I have the bacon going in the background. The B cam died. Unfortunately, we don't have enough batteries for the amount of time that this takes. We're like two and a half hours in right now. If you can do this faster, please do. Make a video of yourself doing it. I wanna see that. I really do wanna see it actually because that's the whole reason why I'm making this series because nobody else was doing it. So I wanted to see these recipes recreated and attempted and see if we could hit that dollar amount. You see me, I'm keeping an eye on the bacon. It's not, it's pretty limp, it's pretty floppy at the moment. We got all the veggies cut for the fajita veggies. Now all I have to do is crack these garlics, get them into the pan with the bacon grease. And then that's about it. Get the veggies going and then we should be ready for assembly once we complete the tortillas. A lot of steps. Oh yeah, we also have to chop the chicken, get it in its own juices. Cause if that ain't but cheaper, I don't know what it is. So all the veggies have been chopped. Now we just have to transfer it into the saute pan. Be an easy operation, don't know. Is it hot enough? It's hot enough. It's hot enough, this'll do. Yeah, you hear a little bit of a sizzle. This pan actually might be way too small for this operation, but we're gonna try to make it work. Gonna put some garlic cloves into the fajita veggies, mix it all together, add some salt. Be a good time. Now we're gonna cut up the bacon to add to the beans. Uh, I kinda let it go a little bit too long, so it's kinda dark, but it's cool, man. We're done with the brown. Bacon's incorporated in the beans. That is obscenely hot. I just burned every nerve in my mouth. It's also really spicy, but it's good. I like it. All right, so the fajita veggies are done. I think they've softened up a little bit. They're not mush, they're like a little tender. Now we gotta get the tortillas going on the comal, the bendy comal. I don't know why it's bent. I don't know if you can see that, but we're gonna roll these out into six even tortillas. We're gonna try to, we gotta divide them up into six even portions. So we're gonna do that. Gotta flower the workbench prior to doing this. Yeah, I got a bench scraper. Production value's at a thousand. All right, so we're gonna get this going in half. All right, six even portions. Now we just gotta roll them out into tortilla shapes. How do people get these into a circle? This is not as easy as it looks. Like, it's not that straightforward. Whoa. All right, man, this is a tortilla, I promise. Will it be a burrito sized tortilla? Probably not. We're gonna, we're gonna try. So this is the test run and it's good, but it's a little thick. It's on the thicker side. It's not, not ideal and they can't really make a burrito. I'm just gonna make like a small, no, I can't really do that. So we're gonna have to find a way to roll these out thinner. All right, second attempt, looking better. I'm gonna try to get it on here before it falls apart. 
Oh, 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 oh my God. No, okay, it's working. The flower's burning. The flower, the flower is burning in real time, man. This is not easy. I think it's too hot. You said this had to be ripping hot, but it's, it looks smoking right now. What? It's yellow. How did that happen? How did that happen? It cooked like in a weird way. Why is it yellow? So I'm not exactly sure the science behind this, but like half of this is golden for some reason. Like I, there must've been like more flour on it and burnt it. But like, this is kind of ideal. Like, this is kind of what you're going for, but it, 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 like the flour is on fire in the background, which is not what we were going for. Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's nice. This one's a little small. This is it. This is everything we needed. Finally in front of us, we have the fajita veggies. We got the chicken that we got to slice up. We got the beans, we got the tortillas, we got the rice, got the cheese. And if I sound tired, it's because I'm actually exhausted from this entire process. Been quite the ride, well over three hours now. And I feel like he implies that you could do this all on your own. And like maybe you could, but I obviously attempted it and it didn't go too well for me. I burned a lot of things. <laughs> so at long last, most everything is cold now because like it's, it's hard to make everything and then assemble it all at once because you have to make everything in steps. This is the same problem I had with the nachos. I feel like this would be a lot better if everything was like fresh and hot, but we're gonna go for it anyways. So we're gonna start with the rice on the bottom layer of the tortilla and then we're gonna go beans. Got a nice consistency, nice flavor. They're pretty spicy. Next we got the chicken. Just gonna gracefully top it right here because I don't have like tweezers or tongs or anything like that. And then we're gonna add a drizzle of the sauce. The uh, spicy aioli uh, doesn't drizzle as easily as I would like. I don't have a squirt bottle like uh, Sir Joshua Wiseman, so I'm just gonna like sporadically fling it off this fork and hope that like it gets some even coverage. It's not as, it's not as beautiful, it's not as pretty. You know what, it gets the job done. Now we're gonna get the fajita veggies on here. A little bit of something right there. They're still pretty toothsome. They're not fully cooked, they're just a little softened. Cilantro is optional, but I'm going to add it as a garnish just because it looks nice. I, I almost don't want to eat it just because of how pretty it is. And we'll grate some cheese on here, a little bit of white cheddar. So first you gotta come in from the sides. This is a little tall, I kinda wanna squish it. And then you wanna bada bing, bada boom. It's a burrito. Like, I don't know what you expected to see. And that's it, man. That's, it's literally that easy. Three and a half hours later, we got ourselves a room temperature burrito, but it's probably delicious. I mean, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna cut it in half, get a cross section going, and then we're gonna assess the taste, the value proposition, the money. We're gonna get into all that. We have the $2 burrito. Was it actually $2? Proportionally, with everything, it came out to about $28.75 for all the ingredients that we used. And if we go per serving, which this makes about four servings, not super generous with everything, you can make four servings, potentially even five, but like I couldn't get the tortillas. That, like, it's, there's not enough tortilla, not enough rice. Uh, maybe you have enough chicken and veggies, but like I'm gonna go with four servings and at four servings, that's about $7.19 a serving, which is a bit far off from the $2 serving. But that's not even, that's not even the worst part. All right, the worst part was the fact that it took me three and a half hours. A lot of effort, most everything's cold now. I'm gonna have to pop this in the microwave. I'm gonna try at room temperature anyways, and we're gonna get the final verdict. Chipotle could never, but what they can do is give you half the burrito in less than a tenth of the time. This is incredible, absolutely amazing. Like one of the best burritos I've ever had in my life. Was it worth nearly four hours worth of effort? I can't say that it was. Like it's really good and I'm so happy to be eating it right now. But would I make this again? Probably not, or at the very least, like I would coordinate it with multiple people. Maybe that would be easier. I could possibly like share the workload because just doing this individually with one person, this is so ambitious. This is too much. Not only is it not $2, it's not life changing. Like I'm not gonna be born again after having this burrito. Like it's really good. Don't get me wrong. Out of 10, I give this like a 9.5. But is it four hours good? It's definitely $7.19 good. But like for $3 more, you could go to Chipotle. Again, like not as good, not nearly as fresh. I guess my, like my stuff's room temperature now, but even then for like 10.50, you can get something that's kind of comparable for like 10 minutes of your time. I don't know. I'll leave this one up to you. It was really good though. 
And before we go, I want to give a special thank you to my patrons. Thank you to Eggox, of course, our original patron. Uh, if you want to help fund these groceries and fund my hours worth of effort, because like a minimum wage, like if you do the math, this was at least $50 worth of effort, right? So if we're doing like gymnastics mentally, uh, a, lot of, a lot of time and effort and money was spent here. If you want to contribute to that, if you want to help that, Patreon is in the pinned comment below.